Hi, and welcome to uh, another edition of How I Became a Theosophist. Our guest today is uh, Theosophist James Lefevre. Welcome, James. Thank you, Dan. Okay, so we're going to jump uh, right into uh, the um, generic questions. Okay, sounds good. Uh, what's your name, where are you from, and how long have you been a member of the TS, James? My, my name is James oh, Lefevre. got cover already. James Andrew Lefevre. Where am I from? I'm from near here. I'm from Downers Grove, Illinois, which is about 20 minutes south of here. Okay. And what was the third part of that? How long have you been a member of the TS? Um, I became a library member about four years ago uh, because I like the library so much, uh, as many do. Uh, but I became a full member two years ago. Okay. So. And do you remember on what was the occasion in which you first visited the library, how you ended up walking in here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, a laptop. I had enjoyed writing, and mostly I was looking for a quiet place to cloister myself and write. And I had tried visiting the library or various coffee shops, and I like this place the best, so... That's why I became a library member, because it had a very good atmosphere. Oh, okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. And and uh, are you active in your lodge, your local lodge? This uh, lodge. This lodge. Am I active in this lodge? Yes. You I'm, are. I'm pretty active. Um, aside from working here, um, doing AV work, photo editing for books like Christian Gnosis and uh, the... Uh, Krishnamurti, um, what is it, the quotable Krishnamurti book, uh, uh, and doing uh, audio, visual, audio video recording. Aside from that, the extra things I do here, uh, I attend Mahatma Letters with John Knievel. Okay. It's a very good class. I do Reiki here on the weekends with Jim Bosco. Uh, I understand you've Almost started to teach some Reiki. You have some. no, I teach. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been teaching classes here a couple of times, and and that's a I'm putting words in your mouth, but um, you sort of said this to me before that that's a, one of the primary um, one of your primary modes of spiritual practice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I do it every week. It's it's like it's you know I do meditate I meditate every day, but I do Reiki after every week, and it's it's a good weekly practice, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, I also enjoy reading here, I don't know, uh, and, and, uh, occasionally I'll go to meditation classes. I went to the meditation retreat here, which is very nice, uh, taught by Julian, and Jim, and Pablo. Um, that's most of what I do. Okay. And I have to say also that I think as much, maybe more than any other staff member, you actually spend your own time in, in the library reading, um, which is going to help when we actually start talking to you about your library finds. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, how did you first learn about theosophy? Uh, and you kind of told us about how you first came to the library, but what about the other part when you actually started to learn about theosophy? Uh, when I started to learn about uh, more doctrinal theosophy, uh, is actually here in this library as well. Uh, a lot of good memories of this place, I guess. Um, Pablo was giving a talk, or he was doing a employee talk for the Secret Doctrine, and I wasn't even interning here at the time, um, much less an employee, but I was visiting the library and I saw that they had done had some notes from like the week before and it looked very interesting to me and I said well, what is this what what a who's been giving a seminar what are these notes for and I actually asked you you were you were here and you said it was on the secret doctrine and employees uh, study this kind of thing and I'm like well can I study it too and you said well it's for employees only but if you hang out in the library during lunchtime you know, you're not officially invited, but we're not going to kick you out. So, that's what I said. So you can you Good. can hang hang back if you want, and that's what I did. And it was very, it, it was just like intuitively interesting to really? me. Like, yeah, I'm like I'm like oh, I'm like I have to, because I I always enjoyed world religions and I I enjoyed reading and everything I get on my hand on hands on in terms of 
religion or Buddhism or Hinduism or whatever multicultural uh, stuff like that. And I had never heard of theosophy before. And it is, you know, it draws from many different places. So it was instinctively interesting for me. And so that was my first exposure. Okay. And, and I, I could also say that probably as much as, if not more than any other staff member, you check out uh, theosophy books, what we would actually call like doctrinal theosophy. Yeah, sort of doctrinal theosophy. So that being said, what does theosophy mean to you? Oh, yeah. um, well, I suppose specifically what it would mean to me is just your spiritual path, my spiritual path, whatever that might be, and it's constantly shifting and it's constantly evolving. If I were to describe what theosophy is to someone else, I might say something different, you know. Yeah. Uh, Yes, sometimes, you know, people ask, oh, what is that building over there? And I'm like, okay, well, um, do you believe that all religions pray to different gods? Or do you think they all pray to one god? And they're like, well, there's only one god. And I'm like, okay, you're a theosophist. I'm like, that, that's, that's step one right there. Um, but what does theosophy mean to me? It, it's my spiritual path, and it's constantly shifting. It's constantly changing. That's how I would define it, personally. Um, and um, do you have or w what would be one or two of your favorite theosophical books or books that you might recommend to um, another theosophist or would-be theosophist? Okay. Um, I would probably answer each of those questions differently. Okay. Uh, favorite theosophical books. Um, I like, I enjoy reading books by Hodson like Light in the Sanctuary and, and Leadbeater and Dora Coombs. Uh, I, I mostly because I guess um, uh, they seem, I, I believe that they're completely real, but they also seem fantastical on the way too. Like a lot of people will like Buddhism because it's a very foundational kind of faith. It's very real and everyday. Um, it's about emotions and um, how to come to peace with them, but I, I like the really interesting stuff. I like, and the, all three of those people are clairvoyance and, you know, uh, Leadbeater in describing the Devashonic plane or in his book on, uh, the, the astral plane. Um, he describes such interesting, uh, beings and elementals and uh, just, um, you know, man's spiritual bodies, that kind of thing. So that, that, to me, is the most interesting stuff to learn about, although it may not be, you know, good for a spiritual path. You know, it's more, the foundation is more important than that. But that's what I most like to read about. Um, what I would recommend to people, um, I would recommend... Well, right now, I'd recommend probably the graphic novels that we're getting in recently. Oh, uh, okay. Which uh, I I suggested uh, due to my lifetime of interest in art and uh, graphic novels that we start stocking and, and you guys began stocking. So, uh, and why would you recommend these? Well, because there's a lot of spiritual comic books uh, or graphic novels, whatever you want to call them. They're one and the same. There's a lot of spiritual graphic novels out there, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have parallels in theosophy, either because theosophy has saturated culture so much it's just not inevitable, or because these are authors that are actually interested in the subject, and I think I think they're underappreciated. And I, I, for me, they're like the the precursor in a way to spiritual interest mm -hmm. because when I was little, I gravitated towards those kinds of graphic novels and. I think they're underappreciated. Sometimes you have to wade through a lot of um, kitschy stuff to get to the really interesting stuff, but you could just come here and get to the really interesting stuff first, I think. Because it's been pre-selected by an <laughs> expert in the field. <laughs> Here's, I happen to have one on there. Oh, uh, this is called Shambhala. Okay. Uh, it's Doctor Strange is a Marvel superhero, but um, here's so you can see on the camera. He's a Marvel superhero, but it's actually about him going to the Himalayas and talking about his masters living in the Himalayas. And there's a lot of, 
you know, it, it, it can be spiritual without being th theosophical, but I think it touches upon doctrinal theosophy, whether it's intended or not. Okay. And uh, there's other books like uh, The Fountain, uh, which was made into a movie, and it explores how over multiple lives uh, we can contend with uh, different, you know, the same karma over multiple lives, which is what theosophy is about, conquering karma. And um, it's beautiful artwork. I know this is not going to come out crystal clear, but just so people get an idea. Um, so there's also um, something about the, I know you write graphic novels too, or you write in this form. I write, well, I write, I write anything. I write children's books, I write graphic novels. Um, but there's also something. Um, not none published, but. Well, yet. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, but there's something about the form uh, of graphic novel or comics which um, forces it to be kind of simultaneously succinct and poetic. Is that fair? Yeah, I would say that. I, in, you know, you can probably see a pretty predictable theme in my interest. I'm talking about how I enjoy reading what clairvoyance see and, you know, uh, the colors and interesting life forms of fairies or elementals or, or things that are true, uh, but we can't see. They're invisible to us anyway. Um, but then, you know, graphic novels do similar things. They take uh, things that are real or things that are true about us and express them in a fantastical, colorful way. So... And with a great, if there's a great writer and illustrator, then nothing, none of the magic is lost. Oh yeah, there, maybe it's even there's expanded. No, there's no limit, uh, yeah. which is why you know um, it's appealing to, you know, the fountain was made into a movie because it's appealing to movie makers, you know, yeah. and you don't need a budget, I guess. But I, I regardless of that, but I, you can make a very personal point. Uh, with uh, fantastical, and so sometimes they're not fantastical. Like here's blankets. Blankets is a, it's just an autobiography about a person who grew up in a fundamentalist Christian town, and he uh, wanted to grow beyond that. And I think that's something a lot of theosoph theosophers or theosophical aspirants can relate to. Okay, I can. You know, let's. Why don't we? If it's okay with you. I would like to invite you in the, about five seconds to join me for um, How I Became a Theosophist featuring James the Fever Part 2. If okay. that's okay. Sure. Because I'd like to talk a little bit more about these graphic novels. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so please um, meet up with us in, on Part 2. I think you're going to have to click something now. Mm -hmm. Hope you, good luck. See you soon. All right, so.